So welcome to another video and in this section uh, we're going to be talking about roots and indices. So uh, you might have seen uh, these types of expressions before and you might be wondering how we actually go about uh, simplifying an expression uh, like the one that's shown here. But first before we do that I'd like to just introduce you to a couple of rules which is going to work really well when times in the bases of uh, these two terms together with different exponents uh, or in fact dividing by that matter. So as a general rule of thumb this is what we need to expect so and it's also it's also important as well that the base remains the same so if we've got something like this x to the power of a times x to the power of b what we need to do with this uh, we, and, and, and it's also it's, it's so important as well it's so important that the base remains the same as well so what we do we write the same base which in this case is x and then we actually add the powers together so we've got a plus b okay so and then similarly if we've got something like this where we've got x to the power of a divided by x to the power of b then that is the same as x to the a minus b. And then finally, uh, if we've got something like this, uh, let's suppose we've got x to the power of a to the power of b, like this, then to actually get rid of these brackets, what you do, you just you take x, and then it's actually to the power of a times b which we can actually simplify further the exponents, which would be x to the power of ab, like this. So what I'd like to do, I'd like to explain to you now why this is the case. You, know, you might be thinking, well, Matt, like, why, are we, why, is, why is this rule true? How can you prove this? Well, I always find the best way to explain these types of rules is to do examples. So let's suppose you've got something like this. Suppose you've got x squared times x cubed. Well, we all know, don't we? We know that x squared is the same as x times x. That's what x squared means. You, you take in the base and you times it by itself two times. Well, we've done x squared, which is this bit here. And x cubed is x times itself three times. So that's x times x times x, which is our x cubed. Now, if we actually count up now altogether how many x's we've got, we can see we've got five x's that are all uh, multiplied together. And that's how we know that x squared times x cubed is x to the power of 5. And it works in exactly the same way. This t these numbers can be anything. And all we're doing, we're just adding up the number of times that x times is, times is by itself. And then for dividing, suppose we've got something like this, x to the power of 4 divided by x squared. Well, that's the same as x times x times x times x divided by x times x which is our x squared and we can actually see that the these two these two x's here cancel out with the two x's at the bottom like that which leaves you with x squared so that explains why we actually subtract exponents when we're actually dividing but the main thing to take away is that the bases always have to be the same. But how about this third rule here? How about this uh, rule here? How can we explain this? Because this is something that can confuse quite a few students. So x to the power of a to the power of b. Well, let's suppose you've got something like this. Suppose you've, suppose you've got x squared to the power of uh, 3. Now, the rule is basically saying that we should get x to the power of 6, but why? Why is it going to be x to the power of 6? Well, let's let's first of all, let's expand out x squared. Well, what do we have first? We've got x squared, but then to the power of 3 is x squared times itself 3 times, so that's going to be x squared times x squared times x squared, and we know, and we know also that x squared is x times x, so we can that's x times x, times x times x, times x times x. And we can also drop the brackets as well, because um, uh, because uh, the whole thing's associative. We can actually see... 
So we count how many axes there are here, and we can see, well, there's six axes, so therefore it must be x to the power of six. And, and, and it works in exactly the same way with um, any numbers. You could have seven here, you could have ten here. You could even switch the numbers around, so this. You could even have... Um, can even have a x cubed here and x squared it, it would still work out but it's x to the power of six so let's apply so we've gone over the examples we've gone over the rules let's now apply that to these questions here so simplify m to the five times m to the three we can use we can actually use uh this rule here and we can say well that must that's simply just going to be m to the power of five plus three which will be m to the power of 8. Moving on, uh, we've got simplify m to the 5 divided by m to the 3, so we can simply just write m to the 5 minus 3, which must be m squared. Uh, this takes a little bit more thought, but just like, just like 1 over 2 is the same as 1 divided by 2, we can apply exactly the same principle to this. Uh, expression here, so that's just going to be p to the 6 divided by p squared, and that's actually going to be equal to p to the 6 minus 2, uh, which actually gives us p to the power of 4. Okay, uh, moving on, we've got p squared times p to the 5, uh, again, uh, that's going to be p to the 2 plus 5, which is actually going to be p to the power of 7. Next, we've got simplify g to the 6 divided by g to the 4, uh, that will be g to the 6 minus 4, which will be g squared. Uh, using, our, using our rule from before, we can see k cubed squared uh, is actually going to be k cubed times k cubed, because everything in the brackets needs to times itself, the whole thing, including the, the power of 3. And then we can use our other rule here and we can see what we can see that that's just going to be k to the power of 3 plus 3 which is going to be k to the power of 6 okay so there we've got uh, our solution here this is a little bit more tricky um take a moment to pause this video and just have a have a look at this and just see how you get on okay so hopefully you can notice well what we need to do we need to we need to sort of look at this term by term, don't we? Because this is where a lot of students sort of struggle. So let's first have a look at 5x to the 4y cubed. And what we can see here, well, that's, the, that's exactly the same as 5 times x to the 4 times y cubed. And then if we look at the other uh, bit over here, we can see that x cubed squared y is actually the same as it's actually the same as x so I've not done, I've not wrote that very well uh, that's going to be the same as x squared times y now since we've got a times here we can also put a times over here as well like that now what we can do we can switch these terms around so we can we can turn around and we can say well uh we can put the x squared, we can swap the x squared in the y cubed over, so we've got x to the 4 times x squared times y cubed times y. Just like, just like 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2, it's exactly the same with, uh, with expressions that look just like this. And then what we can do, we can, we can actually see that x to the 4 times x to the 2 is x to the 6, because 4 plus 2 is 6. y cubed times y, well, y cubed times y is the same as y cubed times y to the 1. So that will be y to the 4. So what we've got, we've got 5 times x to the 6 times y to the 4. And then we can we can just we can just emit the times, times is by simple, simply by simplifying. We've got x, uh, 5x to the 6, y to the 4. And that's our final answer. So I hope you found this video useful and uh, we'll now move on to the next section.